the Islanti caused the near complete destruction of Glorion due to their pride, their stubbornness, and their hubris. The planet was not destroyed thanks to intervention from two of their gods and it did not end well for them. While I explain my viewpoint on this, I want to make sure everyone knows I'm going to be casually referencing some events. They are definitely more nuanced and there's more detail that could go into those, but if we went into the detail of all of them, we would be here for days. And second, words are hard, so I'm going to mispronounce some things, so there's your warning. Earthfall was a cataclysmic event which had significant impact, see what I did there? to the planet, the history of Glorion, and the races of the planet. This event heralded the destruction of two major empires on the planet. There were others, but these were obviously the biggest. That would be the Aslanti Empire, the Thassalon Empire, as well as the creation of the Inner Sea, but we'll come to that in a bit. The Aslanti Empire was the first known human civilization, human empire on the planet. They were raised up from their primitive and savage natures by none other than aliens. These aliens are an aquatic race of beings known as the Abilets. There's another pronunciation that they are known by and I'm gonna butcher it for you now. The Alfolthu, Alfolthu, Algolthu. It's really depending on how you use the GH in this. I'm gonna keep calling them the Abilets. The Abilets claim to exist before the gods themselves, and they are great schemers and plotters, which they did from their underwater cities. Now there was only a small subtle difference between the Aslanti Empire and the Thassalon Empire, because they were made of essentially the same race, humans. The Thassalons, they broke away from the Aslanti Empire because they decided to take a non-racist approach in their negotiations or diplomacy. And it's this difference of opinion that caused a rift in the whole civilization and they separated into their different cultural beliefs. Now the Aslanti people were the most technologically and magically advanced peoples in Galarion's history. The only reason they were able to achieve this status was because of the help they received from the Aboleths. They helped teach them, they helped educate them. In turn, the Aboleths kind of enslaved the Aslanti people. However, as their technology grew, the Aslanti became more arrogant, more prideful. They no longer felt the need or desire to serve and obey their alien masters. The Aboleths became quite agitated with the Aslanti people, and I'm kind of understating their frustrations here. Have you ever been so mad that you wanted to wipe an entire species off the face of the earth? because that's exactly how mad the Aboleths became. The Aboleths had quite a significant reach when it came to their technology and it came to their magic, and they found a very special asteroid in space and used their magic to pull it to Galarion. The thinking was, we will be safe in our underwater cities, we'll destroy everything on the surface and we'll start over. Luckily for the Aslanti people, they had two very benevolent deities. Now, Akavna was the Aslanti goddess of the moon and battle. When she learned what the Aboleths were trying to do, she decided to get involved. With the asteroid coming to destroy everything on the planet, she pulled the moon out of Galarion's orbit and put it in the path of the asteroid. This, of course, destroyed the moon, but it didn't destroy the asteroid. It just turned it from one big piece into thousands of smaller pieces, which still rained destruction on Glorion. And the pieces that fell, they lethally wounded Akavna, but she had done her job. She protected her people. The second god who got involved with the Earthball event and protected the Aslanti people was the god of magic, Amaznin. Using all of his power, he sacrificed himself to further slow the approaching meteor and to counteract the Aboleth's remaining magic on the pieces of the meteor fragments. This further slowed the pieces down so that they wouldn't obliterate everything on the planet, but it still caused significant amounts of damage. When the fragments hit Glorion, it destroyed the Aslanti continent. The Aslanti Empire was destroyed, the Thassalon Empire was also destroyed, and with all the dust and debris that was kicked up into the atmosphere, an age of darkness took hold of the planet, along with many of the, you know, volcanoes that started acting up because a meteor 
struck the planet. The fatally wounded body of a Kavna, the physical manifestation of a Kavna's body, fell from the sky and pierced the crust of the earth. The Mordant Spire would eventually rise from a Kavna's grave, this being from her soul trying to escape the planet, trying to reach Phrasma's boneyard. And there are elves that live within the Spire and they claim they can occasionally hear whispers of a Kavna's spirit. There were also many other events that happened, as such things do when a meteor strikes your planet creating a thousand years of darkness, which was eventually referred to as the Age of Darkness. The Aslanti people would survive and go on into the very distant future to create a massive, massive empire. But what about the Abolets? They had created the Earthfall event. Did it work out as they intended? No, they had made a mistake. They miscalculated the amount of damage this meteorite would cause. Had it been successful, the entire planet would have blown up. But the seismic activity and the earthquakes that happened after the impact eventually caused their civilization to go into decline. The elves that lived in the area, especially around the Mordant Spire, they warned their brethren that this event was coming, and the elves fled to the realm of Sovereign. However, not all elves decided to leave. Those that stayed lived through the Thousand Years of Darkness. They took shelter in the dark lands beneath the surface, which allowed them to survive. However, this environment was not very friendly to the elves. It was very hostile. It was very dangerous. And many of these elves had to make contracts with demons to survive and live in the area. And this is how we get the evolution of the drow. Now, if we go even further down into the planet, there are lands beneath the dark lands. That's where the dwarves lived, along with the orcs. Now, for the dwarves, the amount of seismic activity, the earthquakes that happened when the Starstone struck Glorion, this was seen by the dwarves as a sign that now would be a great time to go to the surface. The dwarves began their campaign for Sky, as they called it, and they started pushing themselves to the surface, leaving their homelands of Narvoth. And the dwarves ended up pushing the orcs to the surface from this campaign. It also took them nearly 300 years to complete. So thanks dwarves for giving us the orcs. Another consequence of the Earthfall event was the return of a great old one. They had been trapped in a comet in part of the detritus. I like that word, detritus. That was ultimately pulled to Galarion. Jamendor. Dor? J Jamendor. His body, his essence, the presence, whatever you want to call it, it fell into a lake in Galarion and has been basically corrupting the planet ever since. There also used to be a large population of Cyclops. They had their own continent, their own civilization. It was already in decline before the Earthfall event, but this ultimately ensured the destruction of that civilization. There are still Cyclopses around, but they have definitely fallen from their glory days. Their empire was called Golgan, and it existed on its own continent, Garunda. The Kelid tribes, the barbarians that existed on northern Avistan, they took shelter underground from Earthfall as well. They had to contend with the orcs when they came to the surface along with the dwarves, but because they were a race of barbarians, they valued strength, they fared far better than many others who encountered the same issue. Many of the magical advancements, technological advancements the Islanti made, they were lost, and Glorion was set back thousands of years technologically, magically, just from the sheer amount of knowledge that was lost. Even in Pathfinder modern day society, they're still not at the level the Islanti were. There was another unintended consequence on the celestial realm. This was because Abadar had banished the god Zonkuthon to the Shadow Realm. Part of the terms of Zonkuthon's banishment was he could not return to the Material Plane or return to Galarion while the sun still existed in the sky. Due to the Age of Darkness and the length of time the sun was obscured from Galarion, Zonkuthon took this to mean he could now return his obligations, his contract for his banishment was fulfilled. For 5,000 years, civilization would rebuild itself until a mortal named Eroden would found a city that would change the future of Galorion. Eroden was called to the Inner Sea region. 
This is where the Star Stone struck one of the primary points of impact. From here, he was able to raise the Star Stone, which was a collection of celestial materials. As we know, the meteorite struck the planet, but it also landed on an Aboleth weapon. Combined with the Aboleth magic and the blood from the goddess who was wounded during the Earthfall event, mortally wounded, Eridan was able to raise the Star Stone out of the ocean and form an entire city, form an island around this. He was also able to achieve divinity status by using and touching the Star Stone. This city would go on to be called Absalom City, and if you'd like to learn more about Absalom City, please click on the video on your screen now. Thank you to all of my patrons who voted for Pathfinder lore this month. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.